every time I go shopping with Teddy, I end up with another bad piece. influence. It's very bad influence. I'm buying it. The Guy, man flights They're right here. It's Howard Hughes. Oh, sorry, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. You get the Howard, aviation baby. Guy. What can you do? <laughs> Mr. Wonderful here. Now you know I love watches, but not all watches have to cost $100,000. What I'm really concerned about is entry level value. Great brands can give you great value if you know where to shop and where to look. Now there's nobody better at this than Teddy Balzar. He's right here with me. And we're in a Longines boutique in Adventura near Miami Beach, Florida. Why? Because this brand represents some of the best value in horology ever. It's not as well known as some other brands in North America, but you should know this is the number one brand in Asia. There are millions of people who buy these pieces. And I've asked Teddy to dig in and pull from the collection some of the very best pieces at great entry level prices. Now, Teddy's very good at this. We've done this before together and it's been very well received. The reason I care is I want you, if you have that little inkling to start collecting watches, to start here. I don't want you to go into debt to buy a watch. I want you to find something you love on your wrist that you can afford now and build on. And this is the brand to do it with. The value here is insane. And some of the dials are incredible. And you know I love dials and red bands. So let's go to work, Teddy. What, what have you picked out for me here? So yeah, just to add on top of it, I mean, this company does a billion dollars a year in revenue. So to call them underrated is kind of crazy, but you could still say it because here in the United States, I just don't think people understand the value that's taking place from the watchmaking perspective and just where it sits. So how I kind of laid this out. Starting over here, now this is, I would say, the entry door to Longines. And they have, I would say, two angles that they approach it as a brand. Some of the, like, the higher end stuff, I would say, is kind of that gateway into luxury. And then you have this, which is for a thousand or so bucks, maybe some of the best Swiss watches you're gonna find. So these are- well, Let's go there. Let's start right down here at sort of that sub $2,000 price. So starting around 1200 bucks, yep. you can get into a watch called the Conquest. Now, I call these watches everyday watches. This isn't a universal term, but it's just something that I think you could just take, put it on your wrist, and be good in pretty much every scenario. 70 hour power reserve, 300 meters of water resistance, which pretty nuts. I mean, this is a non-dive watch. It has a bit more of a kind of distinct crown what's, design. What's the dial size on that? This one is 43, but these are, that's the other reason why I like these. They're available in multiple sizes. You have 39, 41, yeah. 43. This one's in 41 right here. But for 1,200 bucks, finishing solid, will never look out of place. Now this steel with a blue dial is so on trend right now. People sure. are loving blue dials. And this dial has a lot of different attributes. The light plays with it beautifully. I love it on steel. I mean, these sports watches have rocketed to the top of desire for collectors and for just people who are looking for something new and exciting. I like it. One thing to add about Longines and their movements, I think this is a huge I think, proposition for them, is they have exclusive movements provided by ETA. I mean, they're a Swatch Group brand, but these are movements that are not just put in any watch. This isn't just off the shelf ETA 2892. Yeah. These are movements that are made for Longines. They have their own beat rate operating at a 3.5 hertz beat rate. So it's all just completely so that's different. a very accurate watch then. It's, you know, it's an accurate watch. These, I mean, a lot of the different, so that's an L888 caliber. So yeah. those extended power reserve, uh, they have chronometer certifications, which we'll look at for some of these It's uh, a later. clean look, it really is. It's striking and clean. So that's, now here, when you go into this black dial, you get wonderful contrast. Yes. Really wonderful contrast. That really pops. And the, and the black has a different, I mean, you see this is more sunburst with the blue. That's kind of glossier with the effect. Yeah. When is that gonna look out of place though? Never, I mean, right? it's, it's a great sports piece. There's no question about it. 1225 bucks too. I see, I mean, that's- Swiss made, yeah. it's hard to beat. I mean, look, if you're, if, if you're looking for something to get into, this is it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a decision out of these three. Before we, we go there, what about this? So that is the Hydro Conquest. It's kind of the close- A well-known brand within the Longines. Sure, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. what I think many people think of when they or imagining Longines, it's more the heritage pieces. And that's why I wanted to start here because yep. these are more contemporary in their approach, but they look great. It's essentially taking the same type of just architecture with and, this. And, and again, then, not to play with sure. words, but if you're looking at this watch from across the room, I'm thinking Submariner. Ceramic bezel. Yeah. I mean, it's popping with that glossy but texture. It's a, what's the price on it? 1600 bucks. All right, there you have it. I mean, that is, you know, if you, if you really want the classic dive sports look, you can't go wrong with this. And a ceramic bezel? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just it's tremendous value. I mean, that's the bottom line. 
Now, let me, let me choose a favorite here, which I love to do, and I'm really having a hard time because I really like all three of these. But if you just approach them, and I always like the eye candy appeal, let my I decision. know what you're gonna pick, I already know. You know, it's this. I was wrong. There you have it. Black. I, I just think this thing, you would have thought it would be blue. I, I, just, I just think this piece is so striking. I mean, I don't know, it just, you never know what's gonna happen with Teddy, right? Never know. This is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. Although, they're all great pieces, but somebody's gotta do the hard work, and that's me. Should we just move tray by tray? Is that what we I should do I think that's here? what we should do. Is that what we should do? Okay, okay Let, so. Now, what have you got here? These, uh, you're moving up the feeding chain on price a bit here, right? Yes, yes. So now we're starting to get above $2,000 for okay. their watches. And this is where I start to think about, and definitely will extend over here as well, the entry door to luxury. These yeah. are, I would say, luxury products at the end of the day for some of these, and I'll, I'll give reason to that. Now first, this is one of my favorite watches that this brand makes. It's kind of that classic sector dial from the 1930s yeah. and 40s yeah. that so many brands made. I mean, yeah. every brand made kind of their sector dial, but Longines with their heritage, I mean, around since 1830s. They have I mean, the street cred to do this. They do. I mean, right. there's a lot of brands that are just gonna go ahead, hey, I'm gonna put this out because it's popular right now. This brand is never guilty of that because yeah. they have an archive that's as expansive as anybody. It is very clean, very striking. Yeah, that's really nice. I gotta put this piece on. It's it's almost um, the bracelet's fantastic. Yeah, the I mean, bracelet is fantastic, it. but it's it's a um, it's a it's a dress piece. So that's kind of why I like it. Now, what is a modern dress watch? You know, like think about what that is. And now there's a lot of that classic elegance. Maybe it almost seems forced sometimes. There's like that traditional yeah. classicism. That's oh, but I mean, look at that. How it just drapes with the bracelet. I, yeah, that is. I mean, that really pops with the suit, right? It looks great. I look spectacular with this on. It's ridiculous. Somebody's got to watch him. You might walk out with that. Wow. I mean, that really looks. You know, I got to tell you, it, it has it has eye candy appeal on the tray, but when you put it on, wow. It's the bra the bracelet takes it to another level. Yeah. I think that's really something else. Gorgeous piece. Beautiful. Wow. Okay. Twenty one hundred bucks. It's going to be or hard. Twenty three hundred bucks for the bracelet. So. Yeah. All right. What else do we got? So this is more of an aviation theme, similar yeah. price range. This yeah. is called their Spirit Collection. So this is available in stainless steel, multiple sizes, also in titanium now. Yeah. Is that uh, titanium? This is stainless steel here, okay. so uh, with the date. Now what do you recommend between steel and titanium? If you can up, you're gonna pay more for titanium. You're it's gonna, gonna, gonna pay be more lighter, for titanium. And you're gonna have the wow appeal of titanium. Well, with titanium, I think it kind of matters on the application. So if I'm going for a dive watch, I care more about that because you're usually dealing with larger presence. Yeah. Uh, maybe a chronograph, for example, which we'll talk about a little bit later. It has more muted tones too. Like on this, you see like, you know, it has you know, the right. chamfering on the side and, you know, just kind of the polished elements. I, I you have can't really both. Get. I have many titanium pieces, many steel, and, and they both have merit. This has much more flash and sure. zing to it in, in, with light. And, and the, uh, this dial is also, I mean, Logine makes some amazing bracelets. Look at that, that is just beautiful. And these integrations are perfect. You know, it's, that's lovely too. Chronometer certified, 2,100 bucks. I mean, yeah, I mean, even look at the, like, the brush finishing on the side of the case. I mean, just, it's gorgeous. It's a, it's a well-finished watch. Yeah. So that's that, more that, that dial is bluish black. I see hints of green in it too. What do you think? I think your eyes are messing with you. Really? I think it's just black. Just black? Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to add a little sex appeal right there. <laughs> there you have it. It's very nice. Look, that is, that is also very- It's just down to business, right? Yeah. It's aviation style. It's not yeah. forcing anything that it's not. Very clean, very good, very good look. More of a sport vibe to it. Sure. And you get that, you get you know extended water resistance, and that's yeah. that's an everyday watch too. I think if you have a little well, bit of money it, to spend, you want to yeah, go to the next tier from I, over I, here. I think it's a little a more um, into f a more fashion esque in some ways. You know, it's sure. Good. It's good. Okay. Now this piece, there's a lot of complications okay. going on here. I don't like to be overly emphatic. Right. But I'm hard pressed to think of another watch that's more complicated for the money and what you can get from a value perspective. If you like complications. Yeah. And how many does this have? Well. It's a calendar and a chronograph. So a calendar chronograph. Let's let's change yeah. the, the these, sphere of how we're looking are, at this. In other brands, these pieces go for hundred thousand dollars. I just covered a Patek 5970 on the channel. Yeah. They don't make that anymore. They use a Lamania based caliber and right. they use a perpetual mechanism. This isn't not a perpetual, but that's a difference. But still, you're talking one hundred and sixty to one hundred and seventy thousand right. dollars. Right. That watch three thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. So that is tremendous value because. You're right, you can't get anywhere near this. That, a chronograph, for one, I'd say one of the most overlooked ideas in watchmaking is just how difficult it is to make 
a proper chronograph. Also okay. with the thickness. I mean, look at that. You have a perpetual, or you have an annual calendar. How large is the style on this? It's very... That's, I believe, 41 on that. Because it's very friendly on the wrist. Yeah. Pretty, pretty now, compact as well. The bracelet does just kind of drape over the wrist, straight down. I mean, this is a very sophisticated look when you get something like this with all these complications. People are going to glaze down at your, at your wrist and say, wow, what is that? Because there's a lot going on here, yet it's a beautiful dial. This is probably the best value on this tray right now. I, I think so. Yeah. I think so. It's, yeah. it's I mean, really it, it's, it's really, really beautiful. Now, having said that, I've got to make a choice here, um, and I'm going to rank it. Oh, we're ranking, okay. Rank I like this. We're going tray by tray. No, I know. I'm going to rank this. I, I was, this was interesting to me until I put it on my wrist, and it became number one. This is one hell of a watch. I mean, it is just, this is a spectacular piece. And I'll tell you why. It's, it's a very unique dial. When you're buying watches, if this is your first watch, you want a striking dial. You buy for dial. That's what you do. Something that, and this is, this is elegant. It's sophisticated, it's beautiful, and it's unique, and it's an amazing price. That'd be my choice as well. Yeah. Despite yeah. good value here, it's well, where did I'm, the eyes take I'm you? Going, I'm going me. here for number two because it's just such tremendous value. It's ridiculous value. It's fantastic value. You can't beat it. And it's a beautiful, striking dial. It really pops. Beautiful contrast. Easy to read the time, even though it's loaded with complications. I love complications too, so that's number two. And number three, but there's nothing wrong with this. We can fight about whether it's a green or black dial, but you know, I, I like it. It's, Let's get some close-ups on this one. We gotta okay. put this to rest. You know, but it's, it's sort of, it's nice, but it's number three. I, I just, I can't talk enough about this piece. I mean, this is really off it's the It's also available in silver too. What would the price be on that? Same, I mean, it's a little bit cheaper because not uh, on the bracelet. If you go for the conventional strap, it's 2,100 bucks. Anyways, you know, I, I don't get emotionally involved too often, but this piece is unbelievable. I mean, just... I'm glad you like that. I'm actually surprised. I yeah, thought you were going to think that was too just no, you know, it's traditional just, you know, and not going to be it, for you. It shows you how broad the, the brand is. It can give you all these different looks. It's fantastic. Now, let's go a little more upscale here, right? Let's do it, yeah. Well, right. I, mean, I think we're kind of in the same range, but we're, yeah. we're up above $2,000 into, you know, the $5,000 range. So this is a watch I just saw today. I didn't even. Me too. I've never seen that piece before. So apparently it's uh, honoring uh, Lindenberg and it's the transatlantic flights. They're right here. That's Howard Hughes. Oh, sorry, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. You get the Howard, aviation baby. Guy. What can you do? <laughs> you know, he kind of looks like him. What the hell? He's, I mean, he's got the leather hat. You know, the leather hat, kind he's of the airplane. Jumping out of the cockpit. I mean, what can you do? So I mean, this is basically used for navigating on these transatlantic flights. So this is you're supposed to put this on a map. Yes, it's and, like a 180 degree view. You yeah. put this on a map and it'll help you with navigation, which is kind of a concept. It's got the hatchback case back too, so you can see the movement. Now the challenge for me is look at the size of the, of the dial here. It's broad. You know, and I'm not against this. I do wear pieces this large. I mean, you're really making a statement. You're, you're wearing a wall clock on your wrist, but this is a beautiful dial. It's, it's got all the classic elements to it. You know, Roman numerals, I mean, just beautiful. A lot going on here. And this back is very interesting. I don't know if I have the nails for it, but there's a little, a little button for the hatch. And you can open the back, yeah. right. You, there you, you got go. the nails, yeah, there you yeah. are. Look at that, isn't that cool? This, has got a, this is the elements of a pocket watch from way back. And a description of the piece inside, inscribed, beautiful, beautiful. What's the price on this, Teddy? I think it's right around five. $5,000, amazing. Now if you, you know, the funny thing is, I've been seeing women wear dials this size now, oversized like crazy. I think it's a good look, I yeah, like it, you know. I like it. My wife has been stealing my watches and my big ones and just getting the bands reduced in size and then losing the links and saying, oh my goodness. Oh, sorry, Kevin. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. All right, what else do you have here? Now, the next two are ones that I thought were going to be, these are slam dunks. These are Kevin O'Leary watches yeah. I've ever seen them. So yeah. the first one here, this is the Avigation Big Eye. So yeah. maybe that, the best value for a chronograph from a Swiss watchmaking perspective. And I say that for two reasons. One is, again, the idea of Longines having access to these movements. This is a column wheel chronograph movement that you're getting for just north of $3,000, which is remarkable. It's so well finished, grade five titanium. Yeah. And they call this petroleum blue with that dial. And I thought if I had to pick one of these dials, I'm like, Kevin's gonna go for this. Yeah. This well, was the one. You're right, but it's not just the blue. I mean, the blue is spectacular. It's, it, it's, it's a, that gradient just yeah, effect. That, but working with the, you know, this, this titanium in a subtle way, but also look at the design of that dial. It's just. So they call it the big eye. Yeah. And the reason they call it the big eye is because of that sub register at the three o'clock. So that's gonna be, uh, no, easy indication in an aviation type environment to track that. Um, yeah, the that movement. is really, that's a really, I mean, it's a gorgeous piece. And you, you, you get, you know, the great thing, but this is a sports piece, but very elegant too. And blue, 
is so on trend these days. It's just, blue is just not stopping. What do you think about the weight, too? Like, just grab Very maybe light. one of the stainless steel pieces and grab that. That's yeah. a chronograph, and they just pick something up. Yeah, big difference. It's, I love the lightness of it. Also, it's not, over, it's not oversized, yet it's got a lot going yeah, 41. on. 41. Yeah. Very wearable. Price, what's wear. the price again? 32.25. That's incredible value. Incredible value. Gorgeous. And you're right, I like the blue. That's, you know, you, the, 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 the hands on this have great contrast against the blue. Which is usually an issue when you're talking about kind of that faux yeah. loom effect, but it works. Because you're going to just look, glance over, and you definitely get it. And that's a problem in a lot of pieces. That's gorgeous. What do we have here? So if you have to think about the poster child of the Heritage Collection for Longines, it's yeah. probably this family of watches. This is the Legend Diver. So this is known as a compressor case. Uh, so back in like the 1960s, uh, there's a company called EPSA. They make all these cases for all these brands. One of them was Longines. And the two things around it that made it was special was how it was able to achieve its water resistance rating. So the compressor style, it's almost like a sandwich, and as you go down to greater depths, it compresses the case. So it's using the actual pressure of being underwater as a benefit to, to be more it. water resistant, to have a seal. So that's the one What's aspect. What's this rated down to? This is 300 meters. Whoa. And the other thing that's I'm not about down at 300 very often. People are ridiculous when they say that <laughs> 100 meters isn't enough. It's, yeah. just, it's nonsense. No one's going to use this for its full capacity. But the other thing that's cool about it is it has the tool, uh, two crowns. Yeah. And one's going to be for rotating that bezel at the 2 o'clock. Yeah. The point of that was when you're dealing with time-lapse bezels, back in the day before diving computers, this is a matter of life or death. You right. need to know how long your dives are. This is really interesting in terms of how this is mounted. It's, it's, it's got a very flat... Um, yeah, it's thin. Yeah, it's it thin. is thin. It's a faceted case. Listen, very interesting dial actually. Again, with good contrast, so you could see this. It probably has a good luminosity underwater. Yes, and what that one is going for is kind of that tropical dial. So if yeah. you've ever seen those really aged dive watches that have just been in the sun like hell, and yeah. they've just been kind of aged that way, that's what that one's going for. Which I think they did a nice job. It doesn't and, look forced. And price again, Teddy? Twenty-three hundred. Incredible. It, it, it's got a great sport, sports vibe to it, but very clean. I mean, they've, this brand has done a really good job with its styles. I mean, obviously, they've got the history to know what works, but some of these, particularly the newer pieces, are stunning. And I, I can honestly, I think you have definitive watch of this style here for yeah. the price. Definitive watch style for the price. I mean, definitive here. Defin I mean, it's just, yeah. it's tough. Well, let's rank these top Go three. Go ahead, I, I like it. So, you know, it's obvious this has to be number one. I and mean, this style is just... I thought that was going to be your number one. Yeah, it's, it's 10 out of 10 um, in terms of just a really well-designed dial that's, uh, that really pops. I mean, it's got a beautiful view. So that's number one. Now, this is a little eclectic. I mean, this is a pocket watch on a strap in some ways, but... With the heritage and the mapping and all that, I mean, it's you know, it's got a really good story, and I love dials with stories. I mean, you could talk about this for half an hour. Sure. I mean, you know, Lindbergh gets off the plane, says, "I need to redesign a watch that works with my map when I'm flying." I mean, that's basically what happened here. Uh, it's it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful piece. The the only thing that you would say negative, if you're not into really large format, this isn't going to work for you. But large format. It, you know, has become very accepted, and, and I said earlier, for women's fashion as well. And what's the intended purpose, right? If you're talking about an aviation watch, you need, you to, need see to be it. able to see it. You need to be so able to it see makes, it. So it makes sense in this instance. Again, they've done an amazing job on the contrast. You can just, uh, you know, the way you test contrast is you glance at the watch at the side of your, of your site, and if you can immediately read the time, they've done a fantastic job on contrast, and certainly that's the case here. And lastly, this tropical thing you talked about, I like it a lot. You know, it's not as much for me, because I, I prefer, if you're going to go red, go red. Like, this is sort of a... You might need to get some different dial colors for you. But yeah, I mean, you know, this is sort of toffee reddish kind of thing, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't mind it. Um, it's actually a beautiful case, there's no question. Steel, yes. just well-polished, beautiful. They have that in bronze, too, which is pretty interesting. That is interesting. Bronze with that same dial? Uh, they have a variety of different dials. Okay, because that would be a nice marriage. And that, uh, it's, it's a great piece, but, you know... It's going to be number one. You can't go wrong with that. Number two, um, I mean, you know, the history of this piece, and it's, I don't know, I'm, I'm warming up to it even as I hold it. It's sort of, maybe, you know, could it get to number one, and then number three. I mean, you know, I like it, but, you know, can't love everything. You have a winner on the entire table. What's the number oh, one on the entire Teddy, table? Right. i got to do it. Yeah. It's tough. I'd pick mine if you pick yours. I, I will pick mine, okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with this. That was going to be my pick, too. Yeah, I mean, this just, 
for the value and how elegant that is. This just... I do a review every single year about my just top watches of the year. Yeah. And I do stuff that's just more like by category, but then I do my own personal favorites, like yeah. regardless of price, whatever I liked. Two years in a row. Last year was the silver. Again, that's going to be on the list with the black. Yeah, and, this, and the silver version has the same bracelet and silver as well? I don't believe it's actually available on the bracelet, but um, it is available on the strap. I have not seen it on the bracelet yet. Yeah, but you can get silver. This is steel. Yes. I mean, wow. It's just, it's a stunner. Winner, winner, winner. And you just know when you put it on your wrist. It just explodes to the upside. I mean, this thing just, look at that. Anyways, Teddy, it's been great. You've always bring so much knowledge, particularly in the most important area of entry-level pieces. Because if you're gonna get into watch collecting, I never want you ever to spend money you don't have. Mm -hmm. It's a disease, it's very horrible, and I have it, but luckily I make a ton of money, so that's okay. <laughs> but this is the way to go. This is the way to start. And I think it's, you've done a masterful job here, and you've really got breadth to the line. And this so, is just scratching the surface. Yeah, too, I think, Longine, thank you very much. This has been absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, Teddy, I gotta tell you, there's something for everybody in this collection. That's right, and in watches. Till yeah. next time, Mr. Wonderful, bye-bye. Teddy, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Take care, everybody. I, I want it loose, though, because it's, it's got a bracelet type thing on it. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna wear this thing out today. I like it. Just love it. Looks great with the attire today, too. I, I'm buying it. It happens to me every time. It happens to me every time. Every time I go out shopping with Teddy, I end up with another Bad piece. influence. It's very bad influence. This is going to be in my collection today. And I'm going to make sure they make me a red band so I can wear it on Shark Tank as well. Talk about a dress piece. Like, wow, what a dial. I gotta own it. That's what happens. It's all about the dial. It's always about the dial. When you get something unique, I don't have anything like this in my collection. That's why I'm buying it. I'm adding dial, breadth, diversity, stunning. Beautiful.